Good evening. Hopefully we will shed a bit of light on, a, on a, an ethereal, uh, difficult subject of Irish music and radio in this country. I put up verses there. That's very confrontational. I didn't mean to do that. I wanted to create a little bit of a conversation, a thought starter, and just please clear an exit for me at the door so I can get out fast when people are trying to kill me uh, for, for letting you in on industry secrets. And that's what I want to do. I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, you know, where the Irish radio industry is coming from, give you a couple of secrets, hopefully, that you can use to, to, to promote, to get your band, to get your music, to get your artist in the door, because that's what it's all about. Mike, yes, it worked. Uh, just a little bit about what, what I've done over the last couple of years. Um, worked in a couple of radio stations, a lot of radio stations, three of which are pretty prominent in this market, 96 FM. Uh, did a lot of production work and a lot of programming. Set up a couple of radio shows, the Green Room, which is now presented by Michael Carr, which is a really good show. Same in Red FM. Uh, spent a lot of time programming and, and management stuff thereafter. But one of the things I'm kind of most proud of is setting up a little show called Green on Red, which I think Gary got behind the mic at some point. Uh, and Ashley Keating, a good friend of mine, presented as well. And more recently, uh, I was the uh, program director of Today FM, national radio station, and uh, did a show there as well called The Mix Up. So I suppose, to give you the background, uh, the main thing I want to focus on today is, is the programming side of things, the music side of things. Mike? Yeah. And uh, where we sit and how we get, you know, how you get music on. This is, this is working out well. So a little brief snapshot of the Irish radio market. It's, it's small, it's busy, and there's a lot of variety there. But there's also a lot of very similar radio stations that aren't going to play the aforementioned death metal band. They're not going to play the folk band. They're not going to play, you know, what's not suited to them, basically. And, that, and that, that's a key thing to remember, I suppose, if you're, if you're in a band, if you're an artist, if you're, a, if you're you know, if, you, if, you're, if you're trying to sell your wares, be it from a record label or be it from an independent standpoint. Uh, it's no coincidence that I was working for Today FM that the logo is so big because this was a presentation to a, a load of agencies and I wanted to make this look great. Aren't we? Yeah. Uh, no, we're not. I'm joking. <laughs> if you look at this, it's split into various, uh, you know, age demographics, and that's important as well. 15, 24, and, and, and 10 uh, gaps there up. Uh, and, and you know, if you look at where where radio stations are positioned, a lot of them are pop, a lot of them are mainstream, a lot of them are commercial. And uh, you know, it's it's kind of a waste of time, really, to try and get them to play your music. Not, not that it doesn't fit in some guises, it does. But uh, you know, if you're a new emerging artist. Uh, and I'm going to break away from the Irish artist or moniker for a second. It's unfamiliar music. I'll talk about that in a minute. That, that's a bit of a, a, a threat. I got the TH in as well. I'm from Cork. <laughs> I learned that in Dublin. I'm telling you, got me a long way. Uh, but you have, to, uh, you have to just break away for a second from Irish music. It's unfamiliar music. It's new music. And that's what radio programmers, that's what music people in radio are scared by. And, it, and it, the reason is because it's a business to them and they have to play it to the mass to make sure radio figure you hear about in the press and probably did today called Jane Lauer is a certain measure. So the mass audience, they, they, they want to make sure that mass audience is there. And some radio stations on the periphery, like Red FM with Green on Red, 96 FM, Paul McLoon on, on Today FM, have a stream for your music. And I think Gary touched on it. Know where you're going, know who you're selling your stuff to, and that's really important. Uh, Mike? Yeah. So look, a brief snapshot of Irish radio as well. Um, I think competition has increased over the last couple of years, as you've seen. There's a lot more radio stations. There's a lot more um, uh, avenues for, for acts as well. And I think that's important from a radio station's perspective. A lot of what I'm going to speak about is from the inside out, so from radio out for you to judge nicely. Um, is, 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 you know, it's, it's difficult as a business because it's a small business and people need to have audience on books to sell ads, to do all that kind of stuff, to, to make money, as any business does. But also, I think the positive for Irish music is there's a lot more avenues now than there was 20 years ago uh, to, to get music played. And we'll talk about new platforms which have impacted on radio as well, uh, and have impacted on Irish artists, have impacted on any artist to get stuff played on, on social platforms. Um, uh, habits have changed with audiences as well. I mean, I'm 40 or something. There's a lot of people who are a little younger who, who, who are in that gap, uh, are in that category of millennials. I'm sure lots of people here are in younger, who, who, you know, you listen to radio, you listen to, you consume music, consume music sounds very corporate, but you get what I mean, you listen to music in different ways than I did 10 years ago. Uh, and what I'd like to look at just briefly is some of the stuff we've done, uh, or I've done with the radio station I last worked for, uh, in terms of research, which I'll show you in a sec. But just first and foremost, uh, like it's a fact, 20% of all radio station music has to be Irish. It has to be Irish. So we're, we, and I say we in the past tense, I suppose, as programmers are looking for Irish music to play. 
uh, which, which is an important point, I suppose. Like, um, just a snapshot of the research that Today FM did last year uh, to, to, to find out what people want, um, to find out w what people are listening to. And I mean, it's a kind of a new revelation in many ways for radio to, to, to turn around and say, what does the listener want? Because radio is full of egotistical presenters. Radio is full of people who want to be noticed, love me. <laughs> it's a fact. Um, Angela will tell you that's what I'm like in, in, in a, on a regular <laughs> basis. Uh, but it's true. So... so <laughs> It's important, and it's a revelation. Well, it's not a revelation. It's a proper business model to adapt to go, well, what is a listener? Well, what do you want to listen to? You want to listen to something different than you do, and so on. So, so you know, find out what people want to, what, want to listen to, which is what we embarked on last year. And a lot of the stuff the other speakers have touched on about control. We have loads of, of, of access to devices to listen to music on. As I said, people's habits have changed. The, the, the much bandied about millennial uh, generational moniker uh, don't have the same attention span. It's just that's the way it is. You're exposed to more media, so you turn things off quicker. You switch quicker. Um, content has, has changed how it's delivered, the, the quality of it. Uh, you know, it, it's 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 far more complex than it was 10, 15 years ago, uh, which impacts on how people listen and consume music. Consume. I got to change that word. And connectivity as well. People are connected. Uh, I saw somebody. Actually, my 10-month-old son turned on a radio station on the phone today. I don't know how he did it. He did something else with the phone, and he absolutely, I think he rang someone as well, <laughs> using Siri, which is bananas. It's instinctively, oh, okay, look, he's just a genius. But, you know, people a little older than that, <laughs> a lot older than that, as I said, millennials, have such a, 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 an awareness of technology and consume music and consume entertainment so differently than, than we did before. So that's important to know as well. Again, this is from the radio station out. You know, show you what we're about or what in a past life was about as a programmer. Uh, so you won't turn around and say, well, they're not playing my music, they're a bunch of Why aren't they playing my music? Well, hopefully this will give you an insight into why not. Uh, by the way, if you're looking for, for a company, I've got to name check them, and you're ever looking for, for kind of research, and you've lots of money to spend, Spark are great, very innovative. Mike? Yeah. Uh, so how does the music fit into the programmer's world in a radio station? One of, one of the key things uh, that we came across that we found out was it's not about the interview with. Uh, U2, or it's not about the political diatribe, but Malcolm, Glad Malcolm Gladwell picking his favorite tunes. They want more music. They want to hear more music. No, that's a broad term. They want to hear more music, and music being something they know, it's familiar to them, which is important. You can get to be a familiar artist, by the way, which is something else we can talk about in a second, but unfamiliar artists, and again, not Irish artists, unfamiliar artists, and by nature, a lot of Irish music is unfamiliar to the mainstream, which is, I know it's a whole other discussion, but just to give you, as I said, a snapshot as to how programmers think. Uh, it's a threat to time spent listening. Uh, people turn off the radio, as I said, you know, they switch really quickly, so you have to give them, in, a, in essence, what they know. Um, unsigned or new music is unfamiliar, but we can change that, and, and you can change that, and you know, as long as somebody in a radio station in the program department has a progressive attitude and listens to good music, has a near, has, has a, a commitment to, to seek out good new music and find somewhere for it, it'll become familiar. It's a fact, and a horrible fact in ways, and, and, a, and again, a fact based on, 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 on business principles, because radio is a business. 95% of the music that's playlisted on most radio stations, I said playlisted as a, as a verb, it's playlisted, because I'm so used to it, but it's playlisted, it's picked, it's put into a, uh, an, an elaborate music system, and it's, you know, it's spread to make sure it hits an audience. Uh, and 5% is choice. That's good to know, because you know, if you take 10 songs in an hour, it's one or a half song, that's, that's the DJ's choice, possibly. And that's few and far between. On Today FM, it's cultivated, uh, it's national, so it's going to hit more audience, but all the other radio stations I spoke about are ahead in that slide about who's in the market. It's all playlisted. So you're wasting your time, you know, sending the, 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 the Rolls Royce to a presenter, the, the money in an envelope. You, do, you all do that, right? <laughs> but you are, like, I'm being flippant, but you waste, you, you're wasting your time. So find out, I suppose, as, as Gary said, who's in charge of what, who produces what show, who's, you know, who, who, um, who, who has access to the, the playlist, and send them your stuff, pitch them the story. Again, we'll, we'll go through that in a second, Mike. Um, how music is selected in, in a lot of places uh, depends on budgets and size of the organization. In, in, again, in my recent experience with Today FM, we had a music panel. Again, this is pretty standard and can be more elaborate. Uh, depending on budgets and bigger markets and so on, Radio One being, uh, or uh, BBC Radio One being the case in point of how it's done in an elaborate scale with producers, heads of music, heads of such 
genres of music and so on. But in Ireland, it's basically, you know, a, a derivative of this. You'll have a head of music, programmers, producers, they all do certain things. I better speed up a bit because I have a few more to get through. Uh, they sit once a week, they discuss what's good, what's not good. Hopefully in the mix there, and you know, I'm lucky enough to be involved with a radio station who uh, had a couple of people who are into music. They can pick a good ch ch a song. They, they listen to new music. A lot of people won't. A lot of people will just pick something off the shelf that every, everyone else is playing. Um, but there are people who don't, so it's important to seek them out, find them. And by the way, uh, I'll, I'll give you an email, uh, uh, my email address at the end, and if you want to ask, please do anything uh, about what I'm talking about uh, 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 rather quickly over the next five minutes. But it's important to find out who's in charge of, of certain areas of shows, uh, you know, producers, uh, and so on. So what? Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> First, uh -uh. go back a sec, please. <laughs> Just press down. Oh, it doesn't matter. Leave it. <laughs> God damn it, Mike. You got the <laughs> chorus of the second song wrong. Oh, you got it. And that is Mac, finally. <laughs> so music testing forms a, a huge part of how radio does business. Again, talking about the radio out as opposed to, um, you know, how, how Irish music can be helped. And this will help in, in, in a roundabout fashion. But, uh, so from the inside out, music is tested on radio stations. You put together the playlist by, by deciding what you put forward, and it's tested. Mike. <laughs> And it's sent to a universe of people online who, who literally, you know, it's, it's quite scientific and it's quite, it's quite soulless in a way, but, but it gives you a, a, a snapshot of what happens. So, you know, take 10 artists, uh, take 200 people. They are tested, 10 artists that is, to the 200 people. Or maybe I got that wrong, but you get what I mean. So it's tested. They're playing a hook of the song and they're asked to say, do they like it? Is it, you know, do they dislike it or do they hate it? And then it's put into a system, and this is pretty much standard across the board. It's put into a system to tell programmers what they think of various songs or what the audience think of it. Favourite, negative, potential, burnout, and unfamiliar. And if stuff registers on this in red as to, you know, unfamiliar or, or burned out, it's, it just doesn't make the cut and it's not played. Can, can the artists get to the point where they're in this and be really successful? Absolutely. Brian Deedy from Cork. Clap your hands. Uh, you know, clap both of your hands. Get this title right, Colin. Um, I came across Brian when I was working in Red FM as, as, as a programmer and we did some good stuff with him, gave him a couple of, um, gave him a couple of live gigs we did in Today FM, came across him again and in that music group, luckily, a few people, uh, the head of music in Today FM, Brian Adams, is very good, has a good ear for music, so we decided let's, let's see what happens, let's put him on air, let's, let's work him into the system, so specialist shows, uh, you know, a couple of, of spot plays with, with big shows, so people get familiar with the artist and then we can test the song. And as you can see, out of 15 or out of 20, Brandy is at 15, Codaline you'd expect a bit higher, Gavin James a bit higher, but Walking in Car is number three. THs are gone again, back in car. Um, so, so, you know, that's very successful, I suppose, mainstream processing of Irish music. And you might say, oh yeah, Walking on Cars are a household name, but they weren't, they weren't before. Um, Gavin James a household name, but he wasn't, they had to start somewhere. And they, you know, they or somebody around them uh, help them with this to get through the system. And as, all, as well, somebody in the radio station, and I'm using today for them as an example because it tends to break things because it has uh, the, 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 the luxury of being a national radio station, so it has more of an audience to draw upon. Um, so yeah, look, that gives you a snapshot. It's quite technical, but it's, it's again, hopefully giving you an, an insight from, uh, from the inside out. Mike. So what does it mean for Irish artists, Mike? <laughs> Um, you got to get on the programmer's radar. So you got to get on, as I said, people of, uh, you know, people in positions who can do something for your music. Uh, the approach is important. Gary spoke about that. Uh, specialist shows, live music. Can you can you can you uh, do something online to share with the radio station? Can you interact with the radio station? Um, the contact. Can somebody refer you to somebody? Producers know who the list are or is or you know who's in charge of what show. PR. Do you do it? Do you pay for it? Do you do it yourself? Um, the hook, I, I keep mentioning Gary. You mentioned all this, I know he did. And if Shiv, you did, or, or if Jamie did, you get the credit as well. But my story, my band, my product, you know, you need to have that vibrant uh, story because presenters, when they're not talking about themselves, talk about other things and you want to give them the material to talk about. So that's really important. Frequency, how often, what to send and support. I, I remember years ago, I was in a band. All radio presenters are failed musicians, by the way. I was in a band, and uh, I think Tom Dunn was ready to take out a, a court injunction against me. He probably expected to find me in, his car, in the car park with uh, a knife or something, because <laughs> I thought 
you know, testament to how good a presenter he is. I thought he was a great friend because I listened to him on the radio. I was in a band, he was going to play my song. I sent him a CD. I sent him a T-shirt. I had a sweatshop in my apartment where I used to print T-shirts for the band. I sent him food he liked. I sent him chocolate. I sent him drink. <laughs> Something's kind of wrong with that. <laughs> Uh, and I listened to his radio show and said, wow, great song, Tom. Uh, did you get the CD? So, at which point he replied, and 10 emails later he went, oh, Jesus H. Christ, this guy's crazy. I'm not going near him ever again. Blacklist the music, it's not going to get played. And, and that's, that's a fact. Years later, I met Tom when I was running to FM and he was working in Newstock and he was looking for a job. That went really well. I'm <laughs> joking. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 The point is, you've got to make sure you know the lines. Do not, you know, <laughs> do not freak people out as I did. Mike. <laughs> so I think it's good to have your own plan. You know, everybody wants that big record label and sign the record deal across a pool table in a swimming pool or whatever. Tom told me that story. He did that, didn't he? Does anyone know what Tom done? Something happened. Yeah, I know you do. I'm digressing again, time code, eight minutes, right. So two-tiered plan, PR and record labels, they cost money, they're cute, you know, there's a lot of money behind them uh, and everyone would love some sort of support, be it the big Universal, the big Warner, be it the small record label, Communion Records, be it, uh, you know, Beggars, whatever, be it an Irish label, uh, you know, you need it, it's helpful when you're not, if you have that uh, and therefore then PR can be paid for and radio stations you know, get your material. But also, I mean, from, from, from a radio station standpoint, stuff from big record labels gets ignored. Just because they're a big record label doesn't mean it's gonna get played. Universal Warner in Ireland, small, relatively speaking to the world, in terms of uh, record labels, but, you know, they deal with radio stations on a regular basis and they're told, look oh, if you're not playing your music, it's not good, it's too unfamiliar, it's whatever, it doesn't suit us. Um, so yeah, look, I mean, if you have that great, to get to that point, it's good to have your own plan. So your live shows, you know all this, I'm not teaching the, whatever the phrase is about sucking eggs, but. You know, you do your live shows well, you, you get the message out there, social presence, use your video, video content to, to do the same and promote it. Sessions, Shiv, you spoke, spoke about a bit of this as well in terms of content marketing and extend what you do online. If you have an approach, a two-tiered approach, you can make this stuff, you know, ready for the next stage, be it the radio station, be it the specialist wing of a radio station, be it the, you know, be it the, the avenues for, for unfamiliar slash new music slash Irish music to the radio station, and that's really important. And then who knows, maybe you will pay for pay for a PR or a record label. So look, have a two-tiered approach. It always works for any band I've seen. And it's a really good thing to do. Uh, Hosier, I remember when his stuff came into the radio station. Early on, I was working on a music show uh, presenting Ed Smith, really good guy, really good radio show on Today FM as well, was producing the show. And he said to me, come here, look. Uh, I said, what? We've got to play the song. And I was like, do you know what? I don't really like it. And, no, we're not playing it. And he said, look, you have to play the song. It's, it's really good. And I said, you get paid by the PR company to play the bloody song or what? No, I'm not. Look at the video. And I was like, okay. That's an angle. I was like, oh, okay, I get it. Somebody's going to say, did you see the video? So we had Hosier on. We had a chat, played a song. And I jokingly said, Hosier, when you win a Grammy, when you have millions of pounds, come back on the radio show. Yeah, guess what? <laughs> he didn't. <laughs> anyway, like, look, there's a new ecosystem in radio and media. We know all this. It's, 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 you know, it's, it's brilliant, I think it's really positive. I think you know, a lot of great things will happen with, with art, because uh, that's what it is, isn't it? Making music and, and doing what you do. Uh, but it's important, I suppose, to look at the business side of it. From the radio out again, I'm just giving you a snapshot from the radio station out. Uh, so there's more competition, there's more listening platforms which have impacted on lots of decisions on how people consume music. You know, study it, find it, get to know it, figure out what's going on, and, and just jump in, see what you can do. Demographic change is massive. I'm an old man relative to uh, relative, to, <laughs> relative to the target audience uh, uh, that, that I was talking to on radio. So I had to go and learn. What the hell do people want? You know, what, what do they do with their lives versus me? As I said, I mind a 10-month-old. Somebody I'm talking to does something else. I need to find out what that is. Um, Mike. I, I love this, right? I, I spent a lot of time uh, selling the radio station to ad agencies in Dublin uh, the last couple of months. And um, there, there is... I'll, I'll read it out if you can read it. Uh, there's a quote from David Bowie, which I love, and, and it was so insightful from, from well, sure, what can you say about him? He was amazing. But it was so insightful from him to, to forecast this before streaming, before, you know, before music became, became really accessible. And he said, again, before streaming, before you know, peer to peer, before any of that, he said, music itself is going to become like running water or electricity, which had happened. And when it did, it just changed everything. It changed everything, it changed the rules for musicians, it changed the rules for radio stations, it changed the rules for TV stations, 
I changed the rules for everyone in the rules for everyone in the room. And I think it's really important to embrace the positives with that change. Really important, because there are lots of them. There are lots of avenues for 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 again from a radio station's perspective into the radio station for musicians. If I can help in any way uh, over the next while, I've got an email address called well, it's my name, Colum C O L M at iMedia the number, the letter M dot com. Email me with any questions and I'll, I'll, I'll gladly help you, advise you. Uh, please don't send food. Don't wait in the car park with a knife. And hopefully we can, mic one more please. Hopefully we can, uh, I can help out a small bit. So just a snapshot, I've included a photograph for the Q&A later on of Ireland's favourite band. Um, it's you two. That normally promotes ah, anger. <laughs> Uh, okay, look, a snapshot from the radio, that's all I wanted to give you, quite quick, I know, and I probably bombarded you with a lot of nonsense, but it gives you an idea, at least, uh, how the business works. Um, get to know the radio market, yeah, 20% has to be Irish, which is true, and there was a lot of debate uh, in, in, in forum and in, in press and media that that's not the case. It is, and very few flaunt it, few do, but I mean, I can, I can just speak from a personal perspective in Red FM when I worked there, 96 FM, more importantly, Today FM because it's the biggest national, uh, biggest commercial broadcaster in the country, uh, takes that very seriously. So there's an avenue to a national radio station uh, that's very open. So just find out how to get there. And I can help, as I said, if you want to email me, please do. Um, have an artist plan, it's great. Get the programmer's, ra programmer's radar, uh, study the ecosystem, embrace the market changes. Thank you very much. Hopefully I haven't bored you too much. <laughs>